and welcome everyone to this Warcraft replay. Uh, this is going to be game one of the Space 3 series here from the Faith Cup. This is going to be between Yumiko and Lin, and the uh, human versus orc matchup here. Yumiko spawning in as the red human player in the bottom left. You'll be facing off against Lin, purple orc in the bottom right. It's been a while since I actually had a purple player, so yeah, just not enough of those recently, I guess. But so like. I a couple months ago I kind of lost all of my uh, Photoshop files, so I had to do all the layer styles and all that. Um, thought I pretty much had all the colors down for the layer styles, but I was missing purple for some reason. So yeah, finally we have a purple player. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, casted a replay featuring Yumiko and Lin for that matter. I think Lin probably more recent than Yumiko, but I would imagine their playstyles haven't really changed all that much. Um, so, oh, as soon as I say that, Lin's going for a Farseer first. Very, very interesting. Um, I am waiting in anticipation for this because I don't know where this is going to go. We'll be seeing uh, the the classic Farseer into uh, Turin Chieftain, or something different, I have no idea. Archmage for Yumiko, it's been actually a long time since I see, uh, casted a human player as well, so um, always good to see the Archmage come out, spawning the elementals as usual. Lish creeping at the Rock Golem camp, uh, always an, a good sight as a human player to start with these high valued camps, and could potentially get a good drop maybe. Elemental taking the front of the damage there. Yumiko doesn't seem like he's gonna uh, pull out the Elemental to add in DPS. It doesn't look like he really needs it. Rubber Magi plus 6 gets picked up for the Archmage. That is going to be plus 6 Intelligence uh, as well as the bonus damage there as he is the similar attribute. Okay, it's an alright item. Um, the auras are probably the main things you're looking for. Uh, when you're starting those kind of camps. Seems like the Farsi is going to go for an extremely early harassment route uh, as he did send out his wolves to go scouting around and it seems like he, his first attempt was able to spot Yumiko's spawn location and here we go. Uh, summons versus summons here. Unfortunately the elementals are a little too strong compared to those spirit wolves and they will uh, be forced to run away. Doesn't really help that they have uh, uh, weapon typing and armor typing disadvantage there. Um, the player's forces are under attack. Although I guess so does the elementals. Farseer still applying pressure. Doesn't seem like he's gonna start a creep camp anytime soon as he goes straight into tier 2 here. Uh, it's been so long since I've seen the Farseer, I'm probably not gonna see or make any a town is under uh, what is it, predictions. A I have watched under recently town. Grubby playing Farseer, um, but that's just on stream and yeah, he basically just played normal. Um, just standard Beastiary Sparrow Lodge, uh, Farseer first. Uh, I believe he also went Farseer second as well because he kind of uh, missed or completely forgot about the donation that he got. Um, but other than that, uh, he didn't go Turin Chieftain. He went Blade Master on both uh, both games. So whether or not uh, Lin is going to go Blade Master here is totally up to him. I probably am going to not be surprised if we see a Turin Chieftain come out though, because uh, it pretty much hits most of the units that Yumiko would go for later on, except for the Spellbreakers. That's probably where the Blade Master could probably prove to be more useful, but. Um, either way, we are not there yet, so we just have to wait and see. I'll just uh, hover over the Altar of Storms for now, as the Farseer is starting the Rock Golem Camp at the Mercenary side. So, this does not drop the high value items, it drops uh, the two basic items, one consumable as well. A uh, Greater Healing Potion gets picked up by the Farseer, and uh, honestly, it's not that bad of a drops there. Uh, healing Potion will be very useful to deal with just any sort of damage that the Farseer receives. 
plus three intelligence is always nice. We're probably going to see some salves and clarity potion being picked up here. Uh, it is indeed going to be a turn chieftain, so the classic uh, chain wave combo, chain lightning into shockwave. Uh, like I said before, it does hit most of uh, humans' mid to late game units, aside from the spellbreakers. And I guess you could, you could maybe say the flying machines as well, but um, yeah, that is pretty obvious. So, early harassment to try and cancel this beastery, which does succeed for Yumiko. He does have level 2 elementals out. They do take quite a bit more damage than their level 1 counterparts, and the Spirit Wolves are going to be resummoned, uh, refreshing their health pools, and yeah, basically denying experience given over to the Archmage. Um, curious pathing there from the Archmage himself. The footmen are not really joining the fray. It's kind of tough to see what Yumiko is actually going for now that uh, the Spirit Lodge is complete and he actually just cancelled the Beast Jerry, so. B-series placed down here, so he could definitely go for that if he wants to, but now that the Turin Chieftain is out, that might be a big enough deterrent, who knows. Lumber Mill and Double attack. Sanctums coming out for Yumiko. Uh, the Lumber Mill will enable him to go for Guard Towers, and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it for now. Yumiko is going straight after that B-series. Level 1 Shockwave to try and sway these footmen away, but it is... Yet again, only level 1 Shockwave, so it doesn't deal too much damage there. Um, and the Bestiary gets cancelled yet again. Spirit Walkers are starting to uh, mix into the fray, and these will enable the Spirit Link to mitigate... Or not mitigate, but spread out the damage uh, among those beefier units there. Shockwave able to pick up an elemental kill, pretty nicely done there, but that is going to be his last bit of mana. Archmage with level 1 Brilliance Aura, he will be able to rack up the mana very soon, as well as plus 6 Intelligence. Um, it is proving pretty useful for him. So, priests are going to start coming out for Yumiko, but uh, especially in an Orc matchup, we will be seeing uh, those sorceresses come out as well, mainly due to the slows that they uh, offer. And then we'll probably be seeing uh, the Spellbreakers, especially since they counter very hard uh, against these two heroes here. Level 2 and half Farseer, he still has the Great Impulsion and could be given over to the Turin Chieftain if needed. Uh, but yeah, the Overseer is gonna go over to uh, Lin and he will pick up the plus 6 Clove Attack. Very nice item, especially for a ranged hero like the Farseer there, so I imagine that will be given over to him. And yeah, Mountain comes out as a second hero for Yumiko as well. Uh, not really going to counter too much. Uh, he is a great counter against the Blade Master, just stopping him in its track for a couple of seconds. Um, probably just going to be there to maybe get a catch on the squishier units, particularly the Farseer. Uh, we will have to wait and see as Yumiko is going to start massing up sorceresses. He has the Arcane Vault, so he can start producing uh, those much needed spellbreakers here. Ivory Tower is being placed down for Yumiko. He does have Lumber Mill, remember, so he can start upgrading them to Guard Towers. And Peons are going to be brought over. Surprisingly enough, Orc Burrows haven't been placed uh, near here, so they're actually out of range and can't really deal with these towers. Lots of militia coming in for Yumiko. This is going to be. It looks like a pretty much all-in attack from our human player here. Endurance Aura is going to be learned for the Turin Chieftain. Speed Scroll is going to be used to try to make something out of this. It doesn't really increase attack speed, more like movement speed only. But a nice Shockwave there, getting two footmen in one. But he is now pretty much out of mana, he needs to use the mana pot. Farseer does not have a greater healing potion, I believe that was used earlier on. One tower falls and the second one is going to be master pit by those peons. Uh, peasants there. Chain Lightning picking up a couple of units as well. Disenchant all around. Another Shockwave, but it's not going to be enough. This one Guard Tower might be enough to actually uh, end the game. Mountain gets a, another kill there and a Storm Bolt to pick off the uh, Spirit Walker. Um, he is level 2, so Bash is a thing. Guard Tower it's not going to do too much against those uh, buildings, but the, the pressure that they actually uh, generate is enough to lead to more guard towers being built, and this could potentially be game for Yumiko. 
Yeah, I think the problem was that he wasn't given enough, uh, Lin was not given enough time to level up his heroes enough. At level 1 Shockwave, he tossed so many at them, but like it took until like the third or fourth to actually kill. So that is the major problem there. You can see this kind of armor composition, armor composition does very poorly against buildings, but um, yeah, as long as he kills uh, Lin's units, that could force him to go for a GG. Of course, once these towers start actually completing, that will increase the DPS by a lot. And Snare onto the Archmage, it seems like the main target is going to be that hero, but he does have the uh, TP scroll just in case. It will delay the inevitable, as he can just come back later on. Throne Chieftain was trying to go for a path block there, but uh, I guess he was a little too fast for his own good. You see all those sources and priests being ignored, as the Archmage is the... is the main target of Lin? He's kind of tunnel uh, kind of tunnel visioning on that one, but now that the guard towers are complete, it's pretty much over for Lin. I think he's just a uh, prolonging game. As, yeah, he really can't do much about it. TP scroll being used by the Archmage, but even if this Archmage dies, um, I think the remaining units are enough to actually just finish the game off. Going for the Orc Bros is a very smart decision from Yumiko. If he's, if Lin somehow manages to come back, uh, cutting, making his supply upside down is definitely a safe move. But yeah, this is pretty much over. Beyonds are being targeted, and only two Orc Bros remain. Level three on the Mountain King, pretty much is like. Not really worth commenting anymore because uh, I highly doubt Lin could actually turn this around. Yumiko is repairing his keep good enough, I guess. He could definitely bring in a lot more pe uh, peasants to make that a lot safer, but uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, last ditch here from Lin. Our tower is making the way. Oh, the army is actually going to come back and deal with this. Uh, somewhat of a band of orcs here, and the Farseer could have been taken down, but that is going to be a GG from Lin. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, rather quick game. Um, yeah, we'll just go over to game 2 very soon.